enjoying us be addicted EUC rider and I have ridden just about every single high power high speed electric unicycle release within the last few years and pushed into the very limit but this week as you can see I'm doing something a little bit different that's right I'm riding an electric scooter more specifically the emotion climber well I figure out how a two-wheel device work and why is this weird pole constantly in my way from Angel like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and help spread the uni gospel but there is a very good reason why i'm reviewing the emotion climber since this week i am in taiwan the land of scooters more specifically, the northern port city of Keelong, well known for its spectacular coastline and steep mountain streets, which make for the perfect testing ground for the Emotion Climber, a $1,000 electric scooter from the company I had known well through their electric unicycles. I had liked their EUCs because of their design, performance, and better fit and finishes, so I have high expectation for the Climber even though it is technically on the lower end of their product range. Starting with packaging. You get something that is just a little bit more premium than your typical brown cardboard box. The Emotion typically have better packaging, even though this wheel is a lot less expensive as compared to the electric unicycles. Nice presentation of the internal components. A toolbox, hopefully noted. Now assembly are required. And this must be the charger. 2 amp at 42 volt, even though the scooter itself is 36 volt. This charger will fully recharge the scooter in about 9 hours according to their instruction. Nice presentation of all the stuff you get. And they also toss in two extra inner tube. Here is the tiny connector to hook up the headstand. I haven't screwed everything in, but the scooter feels pretty damn robust so far. Emotion have the bad habit of using multiple screws of different size in their assembly and I'm glad that, well, with a little bit of assembly you have to do here, at least there's just two different screw size. All right. Right, I need to install the kickstand next. Almost ready to go. Fit and finishes are excellent on part with the other Emotion electric unicycle I have unboxed previously, even though those wheels generally are significantly more expensive as compared to this relatively budget price electric scooter. All the cables are routed internal to the frame and the scooter is waterproof IP67. As you can tell from its name, the main attraction here is its sexy dual motor setup with two 450 watt motor with a max output of 1500 watt as compared to its main rival, the nine bot max G2, which only has one 450 watt motor that has a max output of a thousand watts. So the dual motor configuration definitely gives the climber an edge when it comes to acceleration and of course hill climb, which we will certainly put to the test. But let's go over the rest of the options that comes with this wheel. The fit and finishes, as mentioned, is excellent. Even the well looks nicely done. The steering column release is smooth, adjustable, and locks with a not plastic but metal button release and has zero play which is great you get dual motor based braking combined with a disc brake on the back which should provide a lot more stopping power as compared to the combo drum brake and a single motor braking on the nine bot max g2 and it also comes with 10 inch by two and a half inch pneumatic tire with inner tube front and back to provide you with some much needed cushion since the one major downside to the 
climber is that it does not have any built-in suspension. The smaller diameter scooter tire tends to give you a rough tie on anything but pristine road surfaces. But I've been practicing on the M10 IV, which surprisingly runs a tire not much larger than what we got here. One handy feature is the split design rim, which allow you to unscrew these nuts and then disassemble the rim so you can access the inner tube more easily. I'm sure we had all heard about the nightmare that is changing small scooter tires, so it certainly is nice that Emotion thought of this helpful feature. The deck is covered with rubber. I would have preferred traction tape, but it's pretty standard stuff. So is the display on top. Functional, but not exactly exciting. Overall, the climber isn't designed to stand out and it is as white bread as you can probably get. This is pretty much a commodity scooter that is designed to be practical and easy to ride, which is admittedly one of the major strength when it comes to electric scooter. You can hand this off to just about anyone. They can just get on and scoot off happily into the sunset. <laughs> but ride it, I will, and I will also tell you why this is just about the perfect place to test out the Emotion Climber. There are 22 million motorized scooters here in Taiwan. Considering the population is just 24 million, it is quite impressive. And this is what the Taiwanese would think of when you mention scooter. Typically between 50 to 125 cc gas power moped with a top speed of about 50 miles per hour. There is of course Gokoro with its battery swapping tech which has been called the Tesla of electric motorcycle. It is so popular that even after 10 years that they have been mostly focusing on meeting local demand rather than expanding internationally. And electric scooters like the Emotion Climber here is actually relatively rare. They don't offer the same level of power and top speed and cannot keep up with normal traffic, nor do they offer the same amount of utility as a regular moped. For the most part, people who actually own one, treat them like recreational vehicles like a bicycle, and for the most part they're confined to parks and bike paths. That to me makes for the toughest and so the perfect testing ground, especially here in Keelong, which is probably one of the steepest city in Taiwan, sandwiched between the central mountain range and the ocean, there are very few straight flat road here, which is again made for the perfect testing ground for the Emotion Climber. Starting with the road right in front of the place where we are staying, this crazy steep road rises a hundred feet inside of a sixth of a mile to the front entrance then it continues and up another 150 feet after a quarter of a mile it's so steep that even 115 cc scooter has to struggle to make it up this hill and before we have a small 500 watt scooter that we used to get around and it just completely fell at tackling this hill and had to be pushed up and to make things a little bit worse it is also very wet here in Keelong and you sort of get these bursts of thunder showers on a regular basis so we have to add slipperiness on top of the challenge of tackling this really steep hill. All right, here we go. All right, we're at 10 miles per hour and climbing. 12, 13. I think we're sort of topped out here. <laughs> Even with a combined 1000 watt output, uh, the motor is still relative. I mean, when compared to an average electric unicycle, which tend to carry a larger and more powerful motor. But the climber is doing it. Certainly is living up to its name. All right. We're all the way at the top. That's 250 feet incline. The other advantage of having twin motor, and so to say two wheel drive, is that with motor braking, you have as much braking power as you have acceleration. So the fact that this is a strong climber also means that it has excellent braking, especially when combined with the mechanical disc brake. And that wasn't the only hill I climbed. Did I mention that Keelong is nothing but hills? Here's another 100 foot climb I did and once again in the wet. The climber again slowed down to about 15 miles per hour in the steepest section but managed to climb just fine as long as you are looking for a higher top speed. 
So what do I think of the Emotion Climber? From the perspective of an electric unicycle rider, it feels anemic, slow, less maneuverable, and a whole lot less exciting, even when compared to an average electric unicycle. However, I do have to say that the average electric unicycle is twice the price of the Emotion Climber, and more importantly, quite a bit more difficult to learn to ride to get to a point where you are competent enough to keep yourself safe in a commuter situation. As a entry-level electric scooter, I also appreciate how much power the dual motor setup offers in a hill climb, acceleration, just riding around. And power usually come at a premium and it's a little bit more difficult to find in the entry-level $1,000 scooter segment. The lack of suspension of any kind is a drawback for the climber. However, I do have to say that I much rather go for power than for comfort because I can always practice riding the scooter and cushioning all the bumps, you know, with my legs versus a scooter with less power. You really are stuck when it comes to the amount of acceleration, power and speed you'll get out of it. And you also have to remember to take into consideration the motor output as compared to the peak output. That rating is going to drop quite a bit as you deplete your battery. So if you start with a full charge and the scooter feels fine, it's going to drop quite a bit as you deplete it. Again, this is where having additional power and having a second motor really helps. And the other advantage of not having suspension of any sort is that it really kind of simplifies things when it comes to points of failure and the amount of maintenance you have to do with hub motors and no belt or chain of any kind and no suspension there's probably very little you have to do when it comes to the maintenance of this wheel so in the end if you are looking for an electric scooter in the thousand dollar range and if you live in an area where there are hills and twisty roads or what have you and where the surfaces aren't terrible then i think the climber is an excellent choice i was actually a bit surprised by how competent it is even when i ride it in a street situation here in taiwan where the traffic are often chaotic and the scooter rider aggressive. And in the absence of my beloved electric unicycles, it is a decent replacement while I'm staying here. So what do you think? Is two wheels better than one or one too many? Well, that is what the comment section below is for. And you know what? Once again, I rambled on too low and saw how managed to waste another 15 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love Electric Unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friend, teach them how to ride, and get them hooked. Until the next video, where more EUC content will return. Thank you. Dr. Hitch, Crado, Don, Gregor.